We trying to behave ourselves on the story? Well, y'all know what we thinking right now. <laughs> I'm ready for the night. I got a little uh, extra energy. I don't know what might come out of my mouth tonight. I can keep it. Tell them to sit their bad asses down so we're grown folks in here talking. <laughs> T-G-I-M. Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jordan. It's Friday and we are back with a brand new episode of your favorite show, TGIF. And like always, of course, we're here to spill the tea, break down some of the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. And occasionally somebody will get it on the show. So sit back, relax, get ready to sip on this, this very hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? Hey, what's going on, Claudia? Chilling, chilling, chilling. I and- see you're home. You're home. I, you know, I'm, I might be home for a few days. I, I, I had to come up off tour. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. My cat, <laughs> my cat was so mad. I've been gone so long. That little MF repeated in my suitcase yesterday. Ooh. Dang. So now I need a new suitcase. Anyways, we'll get into that. Please welcome uh, Funky Dineva. What's up, Q? Ain't no Funky Dineva. Funky Claudia Jordan with that piece. <laughs> Ooh, you see why I don't... Oh. Do you see why I don't mess with them cats? Oh, here we go. That is, that is nasty. This one right here. So cats get mad that when you're gone too long. So he was like, he saw the suitcase out and I think he thought I was packing it again. He's never done this in six years. Never peed on anything but the litter box. He saw this. Look at him. Look at him. Just guilty. He saw the suitcase and he was like, oh, I'm going to fix you. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, anyways. Get, well, get whenever there. we go to Dallas, maybe we got to eat out because I don't want to eat nothing from your house, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Running around, pissing all over the place. Mm-hmm. No, you ain't talking with all the shenanigans that go down at your residence. Right, right. <laughs> right, you know? We got to get a vaccine to go to that boy's house. Right. Listen, okay, Al, you going to co-sign it? <laughs> <laughs> we, we hear your stories all the time. Okay, fair enough. We'll go out to eat. We will go out to eat in Miami and in Dallas. What y'all sipping on tonight? Y'all know I'm, I want to cleanse. I want to oh, God. I got a good old fresh glass of Florida's finest H2O. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's, that's for now. I'm, probably I'm trying there. something different. I'm doing um, rum and coffee. Co- I mean, iced coffee and rum. No, that sounds good. Yeah, it does, right? Tastes pretty good, too. Me and uh, my friend, we, we were agreeing to a 30 day cleanse, but I had such a, I had a crappy day today. So I'm cheating, but with like a weak drink, like just a wine cooler. So that doesn't really count, does it? Yeah, no, nah, that doesn't count. You know what? Oh, when That's I like giving a well a Tic Tac. When I'm talking about I'm on a cleanse, the, the, the whole world is coming to an end, but she get to be on a cleanse <laughs> and drink wine cooler. See how unfair y'all are? Yeah. A little bit more believable when I do a cleanse. Right, right. It's like when you want to get married for a week. <laughs> you, oh, we haven't had any updates on your love life. I know we got to get to the topics. We don't get to it, but the people want to know. Anything happening? I, 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 no, actually, this last situation actually hurt me pretty bad. So, no, I'll tell y'all about that when we have more time. I was in a, a, a six week situation that was going really good. And then abruptly, it just like, out of nowhere and it kind of had me balled up in the bed for two days like kind of sad or whatever but who we'll, ended it we'll, we'll talk about that uh, the other person oh okay that hurts it did mm. but so was life you know what but that wasn't the one you know it, it hurts and that wasn't the one the one's out there how about that all right let's get into these hot topics according to cnn chloe kardashian and her ex-boyfriend tristan thompson will welcome their second child via a surrogate a representative for Chloe told CNN, we can confirm True will have a sibling who was conceived in November. Chloe is incredibly grateful to the extraordinary surrogate for such a beautiful blessing. We like to ask for kindness and privacy so Chloe can focus on our family. It's being reported that the former couple are having a boy. What are your thoughts on this news, uh, Al? Are you surprised? Oh, this is this is tricky. You know, there's one thing that we know about the Kardashian is that, you know, they do not believe they're non-traditional when it comes to procreating. Right. Mm -hmm. And from the timeline, we know that the surrogate was conceived their child in November and then the 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 cheating surfaced in December. So it's not like she could change the fact that the surrogate was pregnant. 
So, you know, and I also feel like there's nothing wrong with her wanting her kids to have the same father, um, in my opinion. So I'm here for her keeping the child. I'm here for the two of them having, um, you know, this child together. Um, and you know what? It's just interesting and weird to kind of figure out this whole non-traditional thing. Because when I think about surrogates, I usually want to support surrogacy when a woman is not able to conceive. Not surrogacy just because someone doesn't want to mess up their body. But I'm in support of her keeping this child for sure. Okay. Um, Q, what do you think about this story? Everything else on her ass is plastic. I'm curious to know if her uterus and her ovaries is plastic at this point. That was the first question that I had, considering the fact that she's having the surrogate. I get this whole thing about women want their kids to have the same last name and the same baby daddy, but there is no way in hell I would have bound myself any further to this man. I personally would have just given up on the idea of having more children. I would have let that go. Or I would have went out and just found me a proper man and they would have been ha been half siblings like not, like majority of the rest of the world out here that got healthy half siblings that got multiple last names. But considering like, I just feel like coming behind this baby, there's going to be a full reconciliation and then another embarrassment again because babies tend to bring people closer for a little bit and then we built this fairy tale again of us being this family then he's going to go out and be Tristan again so mm -hmm. I just don't know that if it was smart for her to bind herself further to this man by having another child with him so Q let me ask you this if she didn't go through with it then that means that the surrogate would have had to abort well, no, I, I'm saying, baby, we would have never got to the surrogacy pace in the first place. Oh, okay, gotcha. We, we, yeah. we would have okay. never got there. I got you. I, I do agree. I think this is a, a kind of like a backdoor way of being tied to this man and hoping that there's a reconciliation in the future. And even though people say, no, this is before the cheating scandal, that's before this cheating scandal. There were right. other, several other cheating scandals. And here's my thing to Chloe, listen, none of us are perfect. And I can't sit here and act like I've had perfect relationships and perfect outcomes because I have not. And I still struggle with it, but um, you did, there is a bit of karmic payback, I think, in how you got this guy. And he's shown you from the beginning, his character out the gate on what he did to his first pregnant uh, girlfriend at the time. And yes, that's old news, but that's not a, that's not a mistake. That's a character flaw. I think there's mistakes and I think there's character flaws. And I'm just not surprised that, you know, he'd while out. And I'm just like, why would you want to tie yourself to that? But I guess the heart wants what the heart wants. And who am I to say, you know, to say any different? I get it. But damn, Chloe, it's, it's, it is it's definitely tying to this man. And I, I hope the rumors are true that she's been dating a financial, um, someone in the financial world. Have y'all heard that? Mm -hmm. A portfolio. I heard that, but, but, yeah. but then like. I'm an equity guy. How does that work, right? Because, okay, like, like okay, you're my private equity uh, date guy. We're at dinner. I get the phone call. The surrogate is in labor with my baby from another man. Now private equity guy comes with me to hospital and congratulates me and holds new baby. Like, how does that work? Like, I mean, that, that's why I don't know that I'm buying all of that. Hey, them Kardashians don't play around. Uh, Kim Kardashian did it. She invited Kanye to see her on SNL. And SNL was where her and Pete the Meat you know, sparked a little flame and she faked a kiss, which now we're starting to think maybe wasn't all that fake, right? So, you know, the Kardashians, they got enough money that they don't have to care. They do what they want to do when they want to do it and how they want to do it. So if they want to manufacture a kid, they'll manufacture a kid. They want to manufacture a relationship, they'll manufacture a relationship. <laughs> That's just them. And we have such a hugely successful show, like it's hard to, I'm sure the lines get blurred, like what you you know, what yeah, part of your life are you yeah. living for, for you and what part of your life are you living? Because you do have to produce storylines and, and you do have to give the people something to talk about. It probably gets mixed up, right? Like, yeah, it's all jumbled together. OK. All right. Moving on. Not shocking, but Chloe is receiving major backlash for her baby news. But the real Housewives of Potomac star Candace Dillard came to her defense. Candace tweeted, like what you said, Al, that girl wants her babies to have the same daddy. I'm not mad. She froze her embryos and popped one in the surrogate. We're not wasting good embryos. Leave her alone, LOL. How do you feel about uh, Dilla's tweet, uh, Q? 
redundant. I mean, <laughs> we've already addressed. We can move on. All right. I, I agree. agree. All right, Candace. Uh, moving on, Ricky Martin could face up to 50 years in prison after new developments have come to light in a domestic dispute complaint made against him. After a complaint was made anonymously un, uh, under Law 54, known as the Domestic Abuse Prevention and Intervention Act, Martin's brother, Eric Martin, revealed the victim is Ricky Martin's nephew, Dennis Yadiel Sanchez. Now, Martin's 21 year old nephew claims that he ended a seventh month relationship with Martin. And that the singer didn't take it well, and he consistently reached out to him and loitered outside of his home. Sanchez also claimed that there was physical and psychological abuse during their relationship with his nephew. Now, under Puerto Rican law, allegations of incest are taken very seriously. If proven guilty, the artist could be sentenced to up to 50 years in prison. The legal battle is set to begin July 21st. Al, what are your thoughts on this news? This is devastating. I mean, gosh, this is devastating. Just listening to you read that is devastating. It's devastating to Ricky. It's devastating to their family. It's devastating to the fans. Man, this is crazy. Your nephew just filed charges of incest against one of the largest stars in the history of the music game. This is really devastating. But you know what? Puerto Rico don't play that. That territory does not play that. And they give harsher sentences if you do certain sexual sexual crimes with your relatives, and that's why he's facing up to 50 years. Look, if Ricky did this, he needs to go underneath the jail. This is 110% unacceptable. And sick, that's sick. With your nephew. Nephew, no. Mm -mm. Q, what are your thoughts? So, you know, I know that Puerto Rico was part of the U.S. territory. I'm just curious to know what the age of consent is. What's the true crime here? Is the, tri is the crime incest or is the crime sleeping with somebody who wasn't of the age of consent? I am assuming that the age of consent is 21. I mean, I mean I'm sorry, 18, they're much like other places. Am I correct on that, Al? Yeah, so this has nothing to do with consent. This has, has to do with, with incest. Okay, now right? let me ask you another question. Incest. In the United States of America, if both of us are over the age of 18, above the age of consent, and we decide to get into an incestuous relationship, is that against the law? Yes, it depends on the state. Okay. Certain, um, states, certain states still, if you have uh, uh, incest, consensual incest is still a crime in certain states and you can face from four to 10 years. Now, I think I remember reading Q, and funny that you asked, I wanna say like Colorado or maybe some C state um, is actually not illegal, but you know, we covered here on the show before that an incest marriage was illegal in a Southern state that we spoke about. The age, I just looked at the age of incest in Puerto Rico. I mean, incest. Ooh, the age of consent in Puerto Rico is 16. Okay. Um, I, I wonder yeah, how- not is, We're talking about incest though, remember. Right, no, right. Point, I just, the, I just the, thrown the, that in the, there. The, the, the point that I was going to make is that I think it's extremely nasty to hunch your cousin. I, I mean, your nephew, your cousin, whomever. Um y'all gonna kill me for this but if they both were of the age of consent and wanted to do it then who am i to get into them people family business mm -mm, I, I, no. I just i just don't know that the i mm -hmm. personally just mm -hmm. don't know that that the law should be in people's business like that That's, oh no especially if he took if, remember he's the, the 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 nephew is saying that he was abusive q so we have a 50 some year old man taking advantage of a 20 year old year, 20 year old. Uh, uh, I don't care. Uh, no, 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 that's sick. Um, it, it's weird how it was, it was, uh, worded though. You know what I mean? It's saying the nephew claimed that he ended a seventh month relationship with Martin. I wonder if they're like first, like, is it like down the line where they're related? You know what I mean? Like, if, you know, you have a first cousin, but you have a third cousin. It's okay. I wonder like how close they really were on the bloodline. Either way, it's a disturbing story. Ricky Martin, we were rooting for you and you have just been in a downward spiral and I don't know what's going on with you. All right, let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more TGIF after this quick break. We'll be back. 
Welcome back to TGIF. Y'all going hard in the chat about that Ricky Martin story. We will definitely keep y'all posted and we get more details. We will definitely keep on that topic. Okay, uh, let's get into this Wendy Williams. Uh, recently, she told uh, the New York Post that she's open to finding love again. Wendy said, if I don't do anything else, including a podcast, I love to fall in love. I like to bleep. And by bleep, I mean F you, fill in the rest. Uh, and she continued, excuse me, gorgeous. Can I F? It's a lot of bleeps in the story. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on Wendy's remarks? Al, what do you think about this? Uh, <laughs> um, I don't, I, let me think about this, Claudia. I, I was confused because she said she's look, she wants to find love again. She doesn't want to find marriage. She did say that the man has to be richer than her, which is kind of weird because she also said that she has more money than she will ever use or need. She doesn't have to ever work again. And she said that she's going to have to do 40 to 50 men, she thinks, to find the right one. Now, I just want to know, and Wendy, Wendy's looking much fresher these days and looking good, but at 57, how's she going to find that many men that make more money and worth more money than her to F-U-C fill in the rest? Mm. A little weird, right? a lot of weird things happening today <laughs> and y'all still, still think this woman's stable enough to return back to media mm. folks still sitting around here thinking this woman is stable enough first of all you notice there's never been conversation wendy is in talks with xyz media company about doing a podcast i did a youtube video earlier this morning you guys can go on my youtube channel I am of the firm belief Wendy Williams will not be returning to media. Um, not no time soon, probably not any time ever. Um, she seems to be on a, a very steady mental decline. I don't care how good she looks. Makeup, can you can put a wedding dress on, on SHIT and it still be SHIT. Makeup does wonders. Wendy is all over the place. She want a rich man. She want a F-U-C-K. She want a, this, this is ridiculous. And the Wendy that we know from the past wouldn't even be talking this way. To Al's point, you want a rich man. You want you want a screw one. You think you're going to have to run through 50. First of all, Wendy, you got more years behind you than you do ahead of you. And you ain't got enough uh, stretch on that tussy cat to even run through 50 <laughs> dog on me. And, so I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do you. Stop talking to the media. Enjoy what little mental capacity you have left. Go out and have you some nice steak dinners with some friends and mm. call Wells Fargo, try to get your money unsold up so you can enjoy the rest of your life while you have your mental faculties. I, I often think about these stories uh, when we talk about Wendy. What would Wendy Williams say about herself you know what I mean? Like, what would she say if she saw a celebrity behaving like this? And I think she would say the same thing, that this person needs to stay out of the media and, and, right. and, and get off camera and take the microphone away from her and don't let her talk. Where are her handlers? I think Wendy Williams would say that about Wendy Williams. Right. And, and I'm the, not, the I'm she's not, making are just terrible. And I'm not trying to be funny. And God knows I'm not trying to pick on people with medical conditions. But ain't nobody trying to hold up no... <laughs> No, you no, 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 ass no, 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 so nobody, first, first of all, according to Wendy, she ain't even got no feet feeling in her. <laughs> she ain't even walk to the damn bed. Then you expect somebody to hold up them <laughs> swollen ass ankles, but your hand can't even go around and grip. You must plan on dating some gynecologist because they don't have to <laughs> up with them swollen ass ankles. So. I keep this microphone from this doggone woman, and this was not a rant or a read against people. Or oh is he gonna hunt her with a lymphedema machine on? <laughs> now this is making all this noise. I can't even keep a heart on because this thing over here going. <laughs> Why she in there moaning and hollering and fluid flying all over? Oh my God! You got to put a. This, <laughs> honey. He must gonna hit it from the bike while I'm <laughs> because I just... Should we 
take a commercial break. I am so confused. No, no, we're gonna power through this, Al. Oh we're gonna power no. through this. Wait a minute, did you say a gynecologist to use the stirrups? I mean, I <laughs> big swollen ass legs. Okay, we're gonna move on right now before we oh, have a hiatus. Put off there. Oh God. Okay. I mean, I guess you can hold one leg with both. No! <laughs> Enough! And let Enough! The other hang it up. <laughs> okay, moving on. This week, Lucy <laughs> was pulled over by the police in Georgia and placed in handcuffs while they searched the car he was riding and take a look at his reaction. Now, the car was allegedly pulled over because of uh, concealed tags and a heavy window tint. What are your thoughts on Boosie's behavior? Whoever would like to go first. How old is little Boosie? trying to figure out how they're going to hold this leg up. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they can use the handcuffs that they had around Boosie's hands. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just playing. Um, listen, you know, Boosie is a street dude. You know that he that was the street dude's reaction. I mean, but you can't be riding with a concealed tag and illegal tents and expect not to get pulled over. I mean, being pulled over was par for the course. I'm glad that in this in this racial climate that nothing bad happened to Boosie and that he didn't get no charges, mm -hmm. despite the fact that y'all know how I feel about Boosie, but. Um, I, I, I'm glad it ended well. For well, Boosie. we don't know that it ended well. You just mean you glad he didn't get killed because in his situation, when they searched the car, he had large sums of money and a whole bag of illegal drug, which was because I took the charge, right? <clears throat> because, of, but you know what, Claudia? Once again, we're talking about Bootsy's antics and not his music. When is he gonna get in the studio? At this point, what are you doing with all this weird and negative uh, press that you're getting? Because you're getting it a lot. We're covering you every week. Let's get a new song or something, please. Listen, I'm just glad he ain't talking about gay people and Little Nas X. So he, he, as far as I'm concerned, he can stay his ass over there on Cops. <laughs> you know, when people get all this media attention, again, like you said, we do talk about him all the time. Everyone has a podcast now. Everyone is getting podcast. People who can barely speak English got podcasts. Okay, like now would be a good time to set up a camera and a microphone. Just go and give us your thoughts, Boosie, because they keep kicking you off Instagram and Twitter. So you might as well capitalize on this instead of just like getting talked about on here and then people forget about it in two days. Go ahead and do something with this this newfound attention. I can't. I don't. I don't remember the music. The last song I remember is Independent. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe Boosie. Same here. So. I don't, I don't know. All right, y'all. Moving on. Boxing legend George Foreman is saying that two women who have made a claim have made up claims that he sexually abused them in an effort to extort him out of millions of dollars. Now, sources told TMZ Sports that a lawsuit against Foreman is expected to be filed in Los Angeles this week by the two women whose fathers apparently had a friendship and a working relationship with Foreman decades ago. Uh, Foreman denies the allegations and released this statement. Two women have been trying to extort millions of dollars each from me and my family. They are falsely claiming that I sexually abused them over 45 years ago in the 1970s. He continued, I adamantly and categorically deny these allegations. The pride I take in my reputation means as much to me as my sports accomplishments. And I will not be intimidated by these baseless threats and lies. What are your thoughts on these allegations against George Foreman from the 1970s, Al? So you know what, Claudia, <clears throat> at the time that they're saying this happened, he was 28 years old. And so at that time, he was a two-time heavyweight world champion. So I'm concerned because normally I would, when I first read the story, I was like, George Foreman has, you know, flown underneath the radar, has been pretty much an amazing entrepreneur. He's worth $300 million, blah, blah, blah. But then I started thinking about it when I read the story. He was 28. These were his friends and business partners daughters so i'm thinking these girls were young these were young girls when this happened and they're asking for 12.5 million dollars each and that kind of stuck with me 
And I don't know, I think that him putting this out as extortion could possibly be a smokescreen to hide what really may have occurred. What do you think, that they were underage? I, I, I don't know, but I'm just saying he was 28 when it happened and they were the daughters of his friends and business associates. So something tells me that they had to be pretty young, pretty young. I mean, I'm just using my thought process about around this, but he was 28 when it happened and it happened to friends and business associates. It was their daughters. So, and then I said, why is he putting this out first? Why are you so fast to get in front of the story? I understand to protect your brand, but it could be a little bit of a smoke screen for something a little bit bigger. Okay, Q, what are your thoughts? You know what? It's them people that sued Bill Cosby and won that has now set the precedence for people coming out all these years later. Like, I I'm, I'm sorry, and me too, women, y'all are probably going to hate me. But don't come at me talking about no shit that happened in 1975. Like I'm, I'm, I'm just not here for it. Like, and, like your ass done dealt with it all this time. At, at, at this, at this point in time, you probably got lymphedema and arthritis and other things to worry about, and not no damn made up trauma from 1975. And if he did play around with you in 1975, you enjoyed every doggone minute of it because you sat on it all this doggone time. They saw, if it is true, they saw what was going on with Bill Cosby and this woman being awarded this $500,000 from the Playboy Mansion way back when, and now they want their piece of the pie. I am sorry. Don't come at me with no mess that happened in 1975 and 2022. Your ass has figured out how to raise children, have a career, retire, and manage lymphedema all in this time, now you want to come sue gone somewhere with that mess. Um, if it happened, it happened, and we really can't tell someone when they should come out. But if you want a case, you have to come out right away. If you want a legitimate case where we can actually have some kind of proof, you and it can be investigated, you have to come out right away. If you didn't come out right away, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. I got plenty of friends, including myself. Who have not gone to the police for sexual assaults that have happened to us and we've just we've just chalked it up to trauma and things that we'll have to get through in a different way but i could never go back and and, and reveal and remember the facts of something that happened on a night in 1991 much less in the 70s and i think it's really really hard to prove and it appears to be a money grab and it may not be maybe this is when you felt comfortable but if you want a case you do yourself a disservice when you wait this long because it's so hard for anyone to a take you seriously be to have evidence. There's no evidence after all this time. There's, there is none. Okay. There's no physical evidence. There's nothing. And can you remember the details of something that happened two weeks ago? Much left. All those people can't remember the stuff that happened in the seventies. I hate to be the guy that be like, they wanted it. 28 years old. He was hot. He, he was an athlete. He was known. If it, if it did go down, they were down with the get down. Now, they, they, you know, whether they were underage, that's a whole nother conversation. And that's yeah. dead ass wrong. But that's one of them situations where you say them fast ass little girls. If they are, I'm just I'm just not. It's that 1975 for me. I, I, I can't agree with you on that. There's, there's plenty of attractive, successful rapists. Darren Sharper is one of them that every girl wanted. Every girl wanted. And they can still be rapists just because you're hot don't mean you can't be a rapist. But I do think it's wrong if you want a case to come out this much. Well, honey, you're gonna have to move. You're gonna have to move me forward to 1997 or something. But I'm I'm just not messing with no 1975. You might as well take that one to your grave, honey. Or take I will it, say take it this. To your therapist. George Foreman was was. I'm sorry, no, that was Evander Holyfield. He was very vocal during the Mike Tyson trial. Like he was supporting Desiree. I will say that. All right, y'all. Uh, Hey, we'll keep y'all posted. I, I don't know what this story is going to go, but we will definitely keep y'all posted. This is something we probably will revisit. Quick commercial break. We'll be back with more tea after the break. Welcome back to TGIF Soulmates. If you're enjoying the show, throw some flames in the chat or for the sake of what Q just said, throw some elephants in the chat. How about that? Give us some elephants in the chat. Will you? 
No, is that wrong? Okay, moving on. During the press conference for Washington, D.C.'s first LBGTQ um, adult shelter, D.C.'s Mayor Mur- Muriel Bowser was asked to address a rumor about her allegedly being a closeted lesbian. He tried it. Watch this. Uh, Mayor, I'm a little concerned because there is this word that you are lesbian and you are in this closet. Why is that the case? Well, what? <laughs> well, I, I'm not in the closet. First of all, don't he sound like the guy when you call Wells Fargo for customer it. service? I'll do it. <laughs> he isn't Charlie. I was going to say I boo from the Simpsons, but you know what killed me with him, and maybe it's because he doesn't have mastery of the English language to use the word "I'm concerned." What in the hell are you concerned about? <laughs> I'm concerned that you are a closeted. What in, the, what in the hell are you concerned about? Like, what's the concern? Whether she was in the closet or not, that ain't got nothing to do with her ability to do the doggone job. You attempted to get a moment. And tried to embarrass this lady, and you ended up looking like a fool, well, broken English and all. With your concern, I'm can I just say real quick? The chat is really being shady. They're throwing up feet and elephants in the chat. Thank you, Funky. No, um, no. Al, what are your thoughts? On this? I, I, I really, really did not like this. That reporter wasn't trying to be funny or get a moment. In my opinion, <laughs> that reporter tried to out her. That, you know, I live here in D.C. That woman takes press conferences every day. That reporter tried to out her. And I agree with Dr. David Johns, who says seeking to out someone is an act of violence. That could have definitely gone a lot differently. And I think that something I think that reporter should actually be banned from future press conferences because it's inappropriate to try to out someone. And I do 100 percent believe that that is an act of violence. It was beyond disrespectful. First of all, what does that have to do with the cost of tea in China? Okay, it has nothing to do with anything, has nothing to do with policy. It, her personal stance, her personal, how she identifies her personal sexuality. Why is that our business? We like want to know about the things she's talking about, her policies. And it, I, I just thought it was really rude for him to do that. It didn't even give a reporter it gave like the guys that like Borat, like maybe someone was trying to shoot a movie and get a moment. Or remember Howard Stern will send some of his misfits to press conferences to ask a, a disruptive question to get a moment. That's what it was giving. And, and, and I'm, 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 I'm sad that she had to deal with that and have to go through that in front of a public forum and then get talked about further with this. So um, Mayor Bowser, much respect to you and how you handle that, because I know you want to cuss the hell out. I will say this, though, right? Like, I, I will say this in all fairness. If there, and, and I'm not in D- D.C., this is my first time ever hearing this lady. I don't know if there were rumors ever swirling around about her sexuality. Were there Al? Is there Al? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, and just in all fairness, with there already being rumors swirling around about your sexuality, and then you being at the podium at a gay, you know, event ceremony thing, the way he went about it is wrong. But I don't think it's far-fetched for people to be inquisitive and want to know, well, hell, since you're here cutting the ribbon for the gay ribbon, gay shelter, it do your ass qualify to stay here. Well, you know, Q, I think it was the word closeted. I think when you tell a person that she's closeted, then you're inferring that she's not being transparent and forthright as a uh mayor as a public official of the city of dc and i think that's the part where it becomes unacceptable you could say there's questions around your sexuality and she would have to address it but to accuse her of something is a different story and and i think that's a question that is better suited for like maybe an intimate one-on-one interview like for a a piece on her you know what i mean like where you sometimes they submit the questions and if not to a live event like that. I think that was really cheap. Mm-hmm. But she handled it. She listen. She handled it well. And here's the beautiful thing. Now it's put to bed. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. Moving on. Martin Lawrence is hopeful that Bad Boys Four will eventually continue filming, despite the speculation of production being held put on hold due to Will Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars. Now, during an interview with Ebony Magazine, Lawrence hinted that Smith questionable accent actions did not harm the film 
Lawrence Holder Magazine. We got one more at we got one more at least. Uh, Q, what are your thoughts on the story? And would you like to see Bad Boys Four? Are you into it? I, I definitely, most definitely. I, I want I want those two black brothers to get all that money the same way, Fast and the Furious. I want them to go to Bad Boys Thirteen if at if at all possible. And Bad Boys Four most definitely will happen. We are just about past Will and Jada. Um, all it's going to take is for Kim Kardashian to get pregnant from Pete. And then like Will and Jada will really be a thing of the past. Will is still an A-list actor no matter what. His movies still bring in millions and millions and millions of dollars for these movie houses. And at the end of the day, that's all people care about is the green. Will will just need to sit out for a little bit. But I am very confident that production will resume on Bad Boys 4 at some point in the very near future. Okay. Al, what do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's just really think about it. Break down the numbers. This is a billion dollar, almost a billion dollar franchise. I think the last reported numbers was in the high 800 millions. It's been going on for two decades and it's one of their largest franchise. I'm going to tell you something. When it comes to making money in the box office, these film houses and these network heads could care less about that black on black crime that occurred at the Oscars. Do I pass up a billion dollars or do I worry about what that looked like slapping him on an Oscar stage? They are going to always lean in on making a profit. And these two men create a huge profit. We're going to see five, six, seven, eight until both of them drop. You know, it's it was a bad moment. It absolutely was. But let's look at our society real, real quick, shall we? Quarterback, white man for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Multiple accusations of rape. Never skip the beat. That team is valuable. And it's like when they, they pick and choose when they need to be mad. But at the end of the day, you're right. It does come down to the dollars and it, it, it will get made. I think enough time has gone by. I hope that Will and, and Chris have, have uh, made amends together, like maybe privately. And we can move on. But yeah, I, I agree. I think it, it'll it'll definitely happen. Uh, Kedra Richardson says, yes, we have passed a slap, uh, period. Everyone deserves a second chance. Yeah. All right. Moving on. It seems like the Musk family is expanding. 76-year-old Errol Musk, the dad of Elon Musk, revealed in a recent interview that he secretly welcomed his second child with his 35-year-old girlfriend, uh, I'm sorry, 35-year-old stepdaughter, Jada, Jana, let me not butcher this name, Bujan Denhout. <laughs> Man, that was hard. Got it, got it. Okay. Who was just four years old when he became her stepfather. Errol divorced her mother after an 18-year marriage. Now, the two have a five-year-old boy who was born in 2017. Errol told the son, the only thing we are on earth for is to reproduce. Al, what are your thoughts? Claudia, this is creepy. This oh, Al, is- one more thing. I'm sorry before you go in. I just want to give you this one last fact. Uh, he also said that Jane's pregnancy was unplanned and they no longer live together. How do you how it's 70? You kicked her. Yeah, okay. but it doesn't matter because they have another kid together. This is look okay, let's just break this down. This is creepy. This is disgusting. He needs to go to jail. The mother of that daughter who allowed it needs to go to jail. And the stepdaughter's father need his ASS kick for allowing for his daughter's new daddy to impregnate her. That they, everybody in this scenario should be put underneath the jail. That man is not only her dad, but also the step grandfather of the new child. Like, where, where does this happen? And he married that woman. He married that woman when that child was four years old. To me, he helped raise that child and was probably praying on her the entire time. He probably changed her, what do they call those pull-ups? He probably changed her pull-ups only to have two kids with her 20 years later. That's sick. You can't convince me that he hasn't been eyeing her the whole time. And that, to me, is sick. And I'm sick of these rich super rich 
filthy rich men taking advantage of young girls. I'm sick of the R. Kelly's. I'm sick of the Bill Cosby's. I'm sick of the, the Errol Musk. I'm sick of the Jeffrey Epstein's. I'm sick of the Trey Songs. All of these rich people feel like they don't have to follow the law and they can have all these moralist lives just because they got money. I'm over it. I'm over it. Put them all in jail. It's giving Woody Allen vibes. Right. Put them in jail. Q, thoughts? Al, Al said it all. And I was going to say, and I was going to say Woody Allen, but Al said it all. You know, even if something's not illegal because, you know, she's of age when you had babies with her, like, where's the, yeah. this don't look right. Where's that? Where's the morality? Where's the, it may not, it may be legal, but why am I doing this? You where's her the- daddy from four years old to 20. And then you going to then have a baby with her? Come on, Claudia. Mm-mm. Where are the women rights then? Cut that mess out. Uh, I'm not against you. I'm I'm on your side. Oh, maybe he got maybe he got, deme- maybe he got dementia. <laughs> oh, I no. think the whole Musk family is extremely weird. I used to think Elon Musk was one of the cool ones, but they are all weird as hell. So. All right. All right, y'all, we're going to take a break. We're going to wipe this incest off of us. This is too much for incest in this show. It's an incestual show tonight. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more non-incest stories after the break. Welcome back to TGIF Soulmates in the chat. Keeping it popping. We appreciate every last one of y'all in the chat. We're up to about 3,500. All right, y'all, let's get into this Amber Rose story. Uh, She recently revealed to the host of It's Tricky, with Raquel Harper, that she doesn't believe in God. Take a look. It just seems far-fetched to me. All right, y'all, what are your thoughts on Amber View's view of God? You know what, uh, to be honest with you, Claudia, I, independent of my own religious beliefs, I have no problem with what she said, not because I agree with her, but because the simple fact that we have to live in a society where people are allowed to have whatever religious beliefs they want. She's not hurting anybody by having those religious beliefs. She's not the only person that holds those religious beliefs. There are a lot of things that are unexplainable in religion. You know, when when you really break down a lot of the fables and the things in the Bible, I mean, they do feel far-fetched you know and a lot of people step in and say well that's where faith came in but you know to you let's not pretend like somebody saying on the seventh day let there be light that that doesn't feel far-fetched those who are christians still believe because their faith teaches them to so i don't have anything wrong with what she said i do have issues though with people who attack her for her beliefs just like you're allowed to have your beliefs she's allowed to have hers a lot of Christians don't feel that way, though. Yeah, because they feel like their religion is the only religion, and what they and they got the supreme religion, and anybody who don't believe the way that they believe is going to hell. And I don't think that's right either, because the whole world, the whole planet, globally, is not Christian. I used to always ask my grandmother. What about those people on National Geographic who are butt naked with the spears? They know nothing about Christianity. Are they going to hell? And she would always slap me in the mouth for asking that question. Al, you're you're a Christian. What do you think about that? I'm definitely a Christian. And uh, yeah, and I want to go on the record that I'm a God-fearing Christian. Um, A lot of celebrities don't believe in God. And I don't think this makes her a bad person because she doesn't believe in God. And I also don't think all Christians don't believe that if you don't believe in Christianity, that you're a bad person. But, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense to me. It all adds up in how, you know, she lives her life, um, how she moves and the things that she do. Um, It all makes sense. So good for her. I think if it wasn't Amber Rose, it'd be a non-story, of course. You know what I mean? People, oh, she's talking again. People love Amber Rose and she didn't say anything. And when she started talking, a lot of people took issue and that happens with a lot of women. Um, and it's not a bad thing. Again, like uh, Keith said, we should all to each their own. And I think part of being a good Christian is to actually not judge other people. And if they choose or they don't have the same belief as you, you should still accept them and not condemn them to the pits of hell, which I have heard some people say. You know, and, and, and of course, not all Christians are like that. This, it's not. No, there, no one's a monolith. But like, you know, let, let people have their, their space and their freedom to feel the way they feel. And if, if the Christians are right and she's wrong, then you won't see her up in heaven. Be with your people. 
And that's that. All right, y'all. Uh, great discussion. We will take a quick commercial break. Y'all don't want to miss the game we got at the end of the show. It's involving the very cute trend. If I text you this, it means this. I want to see what y'all think. So many, so I want y'all to play along. We'll be back, back with more after this quick commercial break. Everybody, welcome back to TGIF. Okay, y'all seen this over the, the last few days. I'm sure y'all had the same reaction I had. Michael B. Jordan's new wax figure. <laughs> it's going viral for all the wrong reasons. Take a look at the photo of his wax figure. One person tweeted, this is Chris Brown and Gucci Man. <laughs> Another one tweeted, melt this one down and try again. And actor Rome Flynn tweeted, fish. Is that me? Um, what y'all think about this wax figure? And how can how do they get some so good and some so bad? Who is this? Goes? Is this Madame Tucson? Who did it? I hope not. Because you know, I, I'm like you, Claudia. They get some of them so on point, and then others be so off center. So maybe they let the apprentice do this, but. They still should have let somebody come. I mean, a simple iPhone comparison to the doggone wax figure should have said, go back to the drawing board and let's do this again. Can y'all put the picture back up when Al gives his commentary? Please, can you put that picture back up? Mm. <laughs> like, that like does a- look more like R- R- Rome Flynn than Michael P. Jordan. <laughs> I think the wax p- figure people do this on purpose. To be honest with you, I think they do it on purpose. It looks nothing like Michael B. Jordan. And Michael B. Jordan is attractive and he should be a very easy face to duplicate or draw. So, I, I mean, only way I could say that they, these are professional people making this big of a mistake is that they did it on purpose. Imagine like you're excited, you know, your, your career is kind of popping, it's popping, you finally get that honor, and then they <laughs> unveil it and you're like, come on, man. Like, because like the, with me, right? the, the Angela Bassett one was spot on. Like you guys remember the spot- Nicki Minaj one? I, I don't remember that one. Hers That's wasn't horrible. good. Yeah. Ooh. You know, I, I want to do a post with the, the top 10 worst wax figures. Like I want to try to look them up. All right, y'all. Well, speaking of something that we're not gonna miss on, it's gonna we're gonna have a little fun. Before we end the show, there's a new Twitter game where people upload emojis to tell people how they really feel instead of typing out the actual words. So we're going to play the TGIF version of that game. Let's play Emoji Me This. Okay. So let's show our first clue. Uh, you know, the, this is that trend. When I text you this, this means you want thin ice. You maybe show some skates or whatever. Okay. All right. Uh, what is it? Okay. What does it mean when I send you a set of these emojis? You have full of S-H-I-T. Al, what's your guess? Uh, just constipated? I have no idea. I, don't, mm. I, I, I think it's I'm about to bring up some old shit. You know, the plunger, plunge it up, bring up some old, I guess. I'm about to bring up some old, oh, uh, okay. Uh, I've never know, knew nobody to say that phrase, but okay. All right, next up, what does it mean when I send you this emoji? Uh, uh, you you a bird? I don't nothing. I, I I can't help you. Uh, I guess. Who you ghost me? Who are you talking? Who are you talking to? Who are you talking? Yeah, you know, they should have put an owl and like a talking like a speaker on that. Right. All uh, right. I think we need it more. All right. What does it mean when I send you this emoji? You're on your last strike. Very I, good. I don't know. Sorry. All right, real quick. What does it mean? That's that. That's right. What does it mean when I show you this emoji? Emoji. You got COVID. <laughs> you oh, or her. it's a subtle way trying to tell somebody you got gonorrhea. They need to go get checked out. <laughs> it, it, it means I'm sick of you. All right. What does it mean when I show you this emoji? Okay. Your BBL is messed up. <laughs> Ants, please. And they missed. Nope, your BBL. Oh, okay, look, I was look, I was being facetious and was right. 
Okay. Good spot. <laughs> Cute. Oh, they, they in the chat. They're like, you're not doing this game right. We might not be. Okay. We're going to work on this. All right, y'all. Listen, um, fun show tonight, like always. Um, what y'all ain't, ain't got time? I mean, anyone got plans for the weekend? All right, uh, please. Has your house ever been so dirty that you got to clean it up before the maid comes? So like, <laughs> when I get off the air tonight, I got to straighten up because the maids are coming tomorrow and I'm just too embarrassed with how things are looking. So that's what I'm Wow. Doing. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a good thing. Productive thing to do. Al? Uh, I got family in town this weekend. My two nephews are here and I'm meeting one of my nephew's new girlfriend. So it's pretty serious, I think. So let's see how this goes. Very nice. Well, you have a great one. I've been gone on the road so long, so I'm just going to bond with my cat so I can stop pissing in my suitcase because I'm very upset about that. All right, y'all. I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva, for joining me tonight. Thank you for watching us on YouTube and keeping those comments popping. We appreciate all the love. We, we love, uh, and, and please rewatch us tomorrow. Stay tuned for the house that is coming up next. Y'all have a fantastic weekend. Be safe. And Q, I need, both of y'all need some good stories from y'all on Wednesday, okay? All right. Yeah, yeah. so. All right, y'all. You have a good one. Be good, soulmates. Good night, soulmates.